Check it out, this track has been in the UK charts for the last 365 weeks. And we believe it's actually the baseline that is the secret weapon behind why the track has been so successful. Everybody gives it to the vocals, the drums, Fooey. the guitar part. Fooey. But we are here to show you Mark Stormer's amazing part for unorthodox ways and approaches that he uses to make a killing bass line. And we're gonna show it all to you today. So with that said, let's jump into the first section so you can hear it and then we can break it down for you. Up high. I'll play the vocal line, right? Yes. Ah! <laughs> like that's... Yes. Then. So much like, dissonance there. Yeah. Brandon Flowers is essentially singing a one note melody. Yeah. That's why it's so easy to sing, right? Everyone can just shout this at a show. And you'd think that Mark Stormer would play Keep, keep going. Right. One, two, three. That would have worked fine, yes. but it's that. Oh. Really, and why does it work? It's the tension and release. So it's just a great example of dissonance used within a bass line. And while on this topic of bass lines that rule the world, in the comments, let us know if any tracks jump to mind that you think like the track just wouldn't be as good if it wasn't for the baseline. Put it in the comments down below, we would love to check it out. Review mode Ian here letting you know that Mark from the Killers probably did tune his bass down a half a step and play like he was playing in the key of D, but it sounds like D flat because his bass is down a half a step. I chose not to do that in this video because when I have played this in bands, it comes up on the set list in record key. I wanna play it in D flat standard and not have to retune my bass. So we have this dissonance in the verse and I think we have to move on to the pre-chorus, which is my favorite part of the tune. Before we do that, can we just talk about tone for a second? Oh, because check it out, dude, we've got the... <laughs> I've got yes. the distortion on. I don't really play with distortion that much, so now I've got it on, I'm just like, <laughs> it's know. all I want to do. I know. But I'm doing it like super simple. I've just got a pork and pickle, P -p -p pork and pickle. It's a way huge. Killer yeah. pedals. That's yeah. an awesome sounding drive. And uh, what are you using? I've got the Line 6 HX Stomp. Uh, my That's trusty. Unlike you. Yeah. That's unlike you. <laughs> no. I've got uh, a little bit of drive going into an SVT model. Not a ton of drive. Because Mark Stormer's sound, he used, I think, a Getty Lee jazz bass on this yeah. record. Both pickups on full, and then into what sounds like a mic'd up amp, and it's dirty. And he yeah. plays hard. And he so plays it's, really it's, you know, hard. It's, kind of, it's sort of yeah. that spirit. Now, let's jump into the next section, because the first real melody in the entire song is the bass. Absolutely. Check this out. Now, just so you can hear how impactful this bass approach is on this part of the song, we've got the original demo without that bass line. So you're gonna hear that section again, but how it was originally done on the demo without the bass line. And you will clearly hear that it's just, it's missing something. Check it out. It's so sad. Should we fix it? Yeah, let's fix it. Let's fix Please. It. Welcome. <laughs> hey, before we move on, we actually have all of this music, all of the fingerings, how to play this in tab and notation down below. Click it, it's absolutely free. I actually played that slightly incorrectly. I was kind of going. <laughs> but Ian's right that he's going. Honestly, we're just doing it for you, not for us at all. <laughs> oh, 
it's so cool. It's a sub melody or a counter melody to what's going on. Make sure as well when you're playing this, you're doing it all down strokes mm. because it just gives it like a way more consistent sound. So it's all, all downs. And it's just more aggressive. Yeah. I mean, even in the verse, which is which is double the syncopation, right? Yeah. Da -na 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 -na, right? Downs. All downs, yeah. Totally different than this. The next thing, we've got to dive into this chorus. And look, this is subtle, but it's so important. I feel like this goes without credit for yeah. rock bass players. Yeah. A lot of times playing simple eighth notes, right? Players will play all over the neck, maybe go up high, down low, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But we feel like Mark Stormer had this arc in this. So it's an unconventional use of range. Yeah. He's not always playing the same octave, but the octaves that he chooses give this amazing tension and release to the line. And I think, even though it's very subtle, it's magical. High, then low, again, low, then we get low, yeah, and then the tension, high, again. It's really intentional and it just helps build the entire vibe of the chorus. He could have just been like... All the time. Which is, I believe, what the demo does. It does. It does the yeah. demo just does the same thing all four times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's four chords and sometimes people just don't think about how to build tension and release with those simple four chords and you can do it with range like Mark does. Now, you just spoke about chords. There's a chord section I in know, this. I know, it's so cool. He's rocking the... Oh, it's He's so rocking cool. the double stops, isn't he? Check this, this out. Root in a third, root in a fifth, root in a third, root in a third. Yes. And then. And if you want the tab and notation so you can see this in detail, links in the description. Make sure you grab it, it's completely for free. But hey, just in case, just while we've got you here, <laughs> check it out, okay? It's just a root in third on the D flat, and then it moves all the way down here to the G flat. Oh, the old power fifth. Oh, it's so good. And then up here to the a root and third, B flat minor. Yeah. And then two down to an A flat major. So again, we've got D flat major, got the G flat fifth, and then we've got the B flat minor, and then the A flat major. And the then, second time round. Then he plays. <laughs> and it's like, it's like emotional to me. It feels like he was maybe playing this live with the band in the room. It feels like he was reacting to the energy of the drums. It's such a cool and raw, yeah. like experience and performance from Mark. I just like, kills me, man, every time. I love it. It's the magic to the song. <laughs> I know. It's the magic to the song. And again, if you have any tracks that jump out to you as where the bass line really was the driving force behind the magic of the song, we'd love to check them out. Oh, and while I've got you, remember, like and subscribe the video. Send us some bass love over here. It's lonely in this place. <laughs> bass! Bass! <laughs> <laughs>